This is the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Gordon. Today, we welcome Greg Cormier to the podcast. Now, here at the Menopause Movement, we have surveyed tens of thousands of women about their experience with menopause. While hot flashes, mood swings, sleep disturbance, and brain fog are all major issues for our clients, overwhelmingly, the biggest complaint our customers have is weight. Women say things like, how do I lose the mental belly? I can't stand looking at myself in the mirror. I want me back. I don't know who I am anymore. I put on so much weight. I just can't do the things I used to do. So today I'm super excited to welcome Greg to the podcast where we talk about menopause weight and how to be successful. Greg is a behavior change specialist and transformation coach that's helped hundreds of women across North America lose weight through self-acceptance, support, and accountability. Greg leads the Menopause Movement Weight Loss Challenge and he's helped hundreds of women get their bodies back in all phases of life from prenatal to postmenopause. He's the right guy to lead our challenge and we're going to talk about it today. To find out if the challenge is right for you, simply go to menopausemovement.com forward slash challenge and you can sign up for this life-changing and affordable 28-day challenge designed to help you get back on track toward looking in the mirror, liking what you see, and getting you and your body back. Now, during the podcast, we talk about Greg's mission, journey, and why he became a weight loss coach. How to get started with weight loss, the all or nothing mentality. It's not your fault. Dealing with overwhelm, what to focus on for success, why challenges work, the role community plays in your success, examples of success stories, what about exercise, the importance of simplicity, separating data from drama, and stay to the end to find out how to be successful in this program, even if you've tried everything and nothing has worked in the past. At the end of the episode, be sure you visit menopausemovement.com forward slash blog, where you can find the show notes plus the links to the books and resources mentioned in the episode. And if you enjoy this episode, like and subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. So you're always the first to know when each episode is released. Thanks for all of the five star reviews. If you haven't left a review yet, please leave a written review on your podcast platform today. Because when you do that, more women can find it and get the help they need during the disruption of menopause because no one should have to go it alone. And thanks again for being a part of the menopause movement. Now, let's get to Greg. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to help you with menopause weight. Welcome to the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. And during the introduction, I talked a little bit about how you're running the challenge for the menopause movement. And I guess what I want to know is, you know, where you live, who you serve, and how you came to serving women in particular as a guy. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here and to be doing this. So a little bit about me. My name is Greg, as she said. Uh, I'm, I'm from Canada, a small island on the East Coast called Prince Edward Island. And I've been working with women for the last three years now. And how I kind of came about it was initially totally by coincidence. I was starting my own journey and figuring things out along the way. And I actually didn't have the best relationship with my mom and it affected a lot of things growing up that I didn't kind of see at the time. And when I got older and kind of looked back and reflected and was more awoken, I guess, or awake, I uh, realized that a lot of it was because she wasn't making herself a priority and taking time to fill her own cup and getting what she needed. And because of it, she was unhappy, unfocused, just really not feeling good and unable to really do the things and live the kind of life that she wanted to live. And so I kind of took that on and decided that I wanted to make that my mission so that I could help other women kind of make themselves a priority so they can get what they need and learn to love themselves and have the kind of relationships with their family that maybe I didn't get to have at that time. I think that's great. I mean, you're talking about this observation that you made as you became an adult of your mother. And I think it's really common that, you know, we as women will, will get pregnant, we'll have children, we'll do the things that we think we need to do. And then life you know, hits us or our kids grow up and we're like, well, what's next? And then, 
you know, in menopause, so many women, you know, they get that minnow belly and they start looking in the mirror. And the, and, and I know for me, it was like, I hate myself. I hate myself. I can't, you know, you're just a fat cow. I, you know, I, and my whole body image issue started when I was in ballet as a child. And I started, you know, I went to ballet. I was always bigger than the other kids. And, you know, we had to wear these waistbands around, right. you know, around our waist. And it was just this little band of, of elastic, but it always just made me feel so fat. And, you know, here I was like a eight, nine-year-old girl, and I I never felt really good about my body. And I was always super sporty. I mean, like, I loved to run. I, you know, I did all the sporty things, but I just, you know, ballet was like, I was more of a tomboy than anything else. And so it just didn't fit. And it was like my mom putting me in, you know, doing this because that's what she wanted when she was a little girl. And Aww. as I grew up, my body image, I, I, I mean, when I look back at my teens, my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, I'm now in my 50s, every stage of my life, I was fat. And I I sat down and I was like, wait a minute, I wish I was fat like I was in my 20s, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> and and I started thinking about like how I was talking to myself and how I was beating down on myself. And you know, when I was pregnant, my son's going to be 28 years old in April of 2021. And I gained 50 pounds with my pregnancy. I went from 150 to 200. And I never really lost all that baby weight. And I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot, a lot of women, you know, they'll have children and, and they just really have difficulty losing weight afterwards. And so for me, I mean, you know, I'm I'm on the way. You know, I'm I think at my highest my weight was in the high 220, might have been 230. I I was afraid to step on the scale. And so, you know, I'm I'm on the way to getting back the body that I that I once had and and I love the body I have now. I can do a lot more with it than I used to, you know, after after practicing and and things like that. But when it comes to getting started, and what, what do you think? Because so many women, just our biggest struggle, you know, and after surveying tens of thousands of women is menopause weight and this minnow belly and not recognizing myself in the mirror, looking in the mirror and, and just being so upset. And so when it comes to getting started on this journey, what do you think is the best way to do it? I think that it sounds really simple, but the best way to do it is to just pick one small action that you can do and just get started. I think what holds a lot of people back is feeling like they have to do everything all at once and it's overwhelming it's like okay well I want to start but I don't feel like I can do all these things at one time I don't feel like I can make all these changes right now because as a person you have all these other responsibilities in life already there and so you want to make these changes but it feels like it has to be all or nothing and I'd say that's one of the biggest things that holds people back is that all or nothing thinking so if you actually don't need to change everything all at once and doing that actually makes it harder to stick with because how many times have we all started a diet and exercise program and went from fast food to salads only to feel restricted and give up the key is to make these small changes that give you big results and that's one of the keys that i've incorporated in working with my clients it's like what's the smallest change you can make that will have unequal proportion of results for the effort you put in. What are the big rocks? These are the things that if you focus on them, everything else will kind of fall into place easier. And too many people spend too much time working on what I call the small rocks. These are like the little things that make you feel overwhelmed because you're doing 20 things, but they're only making a small change. There's a few core things that if you do, will give you the best results for your efforts. And so it's not about changing everything all at once. It's just to get started and, ex and understand that perfection isn't realistic or required. I would say one of the biggest reasons why most people fail to reach their goals is not because they can't do everything perfectly, but because they feel like they have to do everything perfectly and give up when they can. So I think that's really important. And when it comes to, you know, weight loss, I, I, there's a great analogy I like to use all the time. And, and you know, behavior change is hard. And weight loss is a, you know, it's this thing where, you know, we call it the battle of the bulge and whatnot. And there's a lot of external things that are pushing on us that have contributed, I think, to weight gain in, in America. And, you know, a lot of that is the food lobby and the way, and, and you're in Canada, so it's, it's probably not much different, but the food lobby, the farm lobby, you know, big farm, you know, the big agriculture that tell us what to eat. And that may not necessarily be the right things to eat to support our changing bodies, especially in menopause. And when it comes to what to eat, there's just a lot of belief that's in there that, that may or may not be true. Like fat is the enemy. 
that fat's going to cause, you know, if you eat more fat, you're going to have heart attacks. Right. And, and, and we know, we know this to not be true. And we talk a lot about the dangers of seed oils and that sort of thing and how seed oils can contribute to all sorts of diseases, including hormonal problems because fats are the basis of horm hormones. But when it comes to making the changes that we need to make in order to be successful at, in, in this weight loss journey, I mean, we know it's possible, right? Because it's so many people are able to do it. And then if right. it's possible for so many other people, why can't it be possible for me? And that was something that I dealt with so much. Like, you know, why is it that I can see, you know, this person, I'm doing the same things that that person's doing, but I'm not losing weight. You know, I'm, I'm lifting weights every day. I'm running, I'm, I'm moving my body and I'm still not losing weight. And that's, I think where for me, what happened was, you know, I hired a coach, hired a coach like you to help me kind of get my diet in order in order to support my changing body. And the analogy I was going to say is that, you know, you, you can't, can't lose a hundred pounds overnight. Right. You can decide that you're going to lose a hundred pounds in an instant. You can make that decision. But the problem is the tenacity, the stick to itiveness, and actually supporting yourself as you become that person who is a hundred pounds lighter. And I like to say that you have to change who you're being right now and start doing the things that that person who has a hundred pounds, you know, who weighs a hundred pounds less does, you know, whether that be movement, whether that be eating differently, whether that be meat thinking differently. And so the thing is, is that in order to be successful, what I hear you saying is that we have to set realistic goals and then also be gentle with ourselves when we fall off the wagon. Yes. That Plan is, for failure. Uh, that is 100% right. Because yeah, you have to understand like, or a lot of people don't understand that failure is part of the process. And we always, if some reason we assume if we don't get it right the first time that we're just not good enough, that there's something wrong with us because yeah. no one posts about how many times they failed before they succeed. All you see is all these people around you sharing their stories of success and no and not talking about how many times they fell down and they fell off the wagon before they got back on and finally got there. There's a quote from someone that says, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's really true. And I mean, I, I try to talk pretty freely here on the podcast about my own failure. Failures, but I will say that when we were able to travel, I mean, I traveled extensively and I felt like it was really important and important. It was, it was like a value to me. Like if I had the means, I should travel around the world. And so I didn't restrict my diet. And what would happen was I would go and make the, and travel. And then I, you know, I wouldn't exercise, I would eat whatever, and I'd come home and then I wouldn't change that behavior. And I would just kind of be you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds heavier. And of course that crept on. It wasn't like I, I come back from a vacation and be 10 pounds heavier. And then I, you know, beat myself down and just, you know, eat my feelings and, and all of the things. And so, you know, I, I want everyone who's listening or watching to this episode to understand that the journey is filled with, it's filled with ups and downs and the scale is not, it's just a number. It's not your identity. Yes. And so when, when, one of the things I think is so important when we're doing any sort of goal setting is that we were able to uh, detach from the outcome and just focus on the process. Because when you focus on the process, then what happens is you start to fall in love with that actual thing, the process and how that process is changing you. But when it comes to weight loss, one of the things that I've always found that really helps me whenever I embark on a weight loss journey is a quick win. So what do you do to give women a quick win in your programs? Right. So there's this is where those big rocks kind of come in that I talked about. Like these are the things that if you focus on can get you unproportionate results for the time you're putting in. And so I think what you said was really important about understanding that the actions create the outcomes and too often too many people focus on the outcomes and we can't really control that. So when we focus on the actions we can take that get the outcome, we can fall in love with the process and know that if we do this, the outcome will come. But so one example of an action that can get you a quick win or closer to that outcome could be like getting protein with your meals. This is yeah. a huge one for so many people. And it, it seems like with men and women, if men are craving something, it's something like a burger, like we want something with protein. And with women, this is just an observation, this isn't science, but it seems to be more something carby, like chips or a pastry or something like that. And so what happens is that sometimes you we tend to under eat protein and then protein is like one of the things that helps you feel full and satisfied 
And for weight loss, that's super important. So I think a big win is when you get that, you don't feel hungry while you're working out. And it's amazing how many women I've seen get results disproportionate to the effort they had to put in to add that protein within a week or two. That's just an example. I love that. So adding extra protein. When you add extra protein to your diet, you're going to feel full. And when you start to feel mm. full, you're going to have fewer cravings. And it's yes. just a spiral of really great stuff. So in the intro, I talk a little bit about the challenge that we're, you know, th that we're offering our, our 28 day weight loss challenge here at the menopause movement and, and how you're the, the right guy to run it. So why a challenge? Why is a challenge the, the way to go? Right. And so with a challenge, it's like, as people, we naturally are tempted to go and try to complete challenges. That's how we feel kind of successful in life. And when the challenge also provides you with support and accountability and the right tools it empowers you to stick with it and complete the challenge so that you can say challenge accepted let's do this and it kind of helps you with that mindset and so a challenge is something that you can feel is an accomplishment when you're done and it also is a goal to work towards and i say that i think the first 28 days are always the hardest for people trying to make a change like you said getting started is really what people struggle with because it's like, I don't know what to do. There's so much to do. So 28 days is enough time to kickstart things and get you a really good result without feeling like you're committing to too much all at once with like you yeah. with overwhelm of life and things like that. So no. uh, that's why I think challenges are very successful and why a lot of people really like the challenges. Yeah. So it's 28 days. H how do you find that like when you when you have a, a community component? So one of the one of the problems with menopause is women feel lost and lonely. They feel isolated. They feel like they're the only ones. And we don't talk about about female issues because we're trained from a very young age that like periods are gross. And so when when things start to change in our bodies, we just don't talk about it. And one of the things that that I see over and over and over in our programs is like, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. And so how would you say that the community aspect is how, how does that help in terms of right. uh, getting success right yeah community is such a big aspect of it for sure because like you said when people feel like I'm alone and I have no one to talk to about this stuff and it's only me and it it makes you feel almost like hopeless so when you're in a community of people who are going through the same things that you're going through it gives you a sense of normality like you are you're not alone there's other people struggling with this too and also when you see them winning and you know they're in the same situation as you it's like you said like if them why not me it right. gives you kind of that hope and that motivation to show you that what you want to accomplish is possible for someone in your situation. And it's amazing the level of support I've seen in these challenges and how like inspiring it is to see everyone building each other up and sharing their struggles and sharing their wins. And it just makes you want to keep going and feel like you're a part of something. Oh, that's great. So do you have any examples of like success stories for women you've worked with in your challenges? Yes. Yeah, so I've worked with hundreds of women from all over North America. And in that time, I've seen some pretty amazing results. So I've put together a few examples. I don't, I didn't want to take all day. So I could have put a lot more, but I, I picked out a few that I thought would really showcase what's possible in that time period. So I get if you'd like, I can run through those now. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So for those of you who are on the podcast and are just audio only, we're, I'm going to read to you and give you a, a kind of an audio description of what the pictures look like. And if you really want to know what it looks like, you know, go to uh, menopausemovement.com forward slash blog to take a look at the video or you can find us on YouTube. So this is one of your 28 day people. Her name is Kelly. And yes. when when I look at her picture... She's wearing, she's wearing black leggings and a black uh, tank top, which is, you know, so common for us in menopause. We wear a lot of black to hide our figure. And when I look at her body, she's got a little bit of a muffin top in the before picture. And her belly is just behind her breasts in the before picture. And in the after picture, this is after 28 days, she lost 14 pounds and 18 inches and yes. working, you know, working in a community, working with Greg. And what I see is that her belly is smaller. She, she's got a nicer looking figure in terms of, you know, maybe more of an hourglass. And she still has a small muffin top, but it, it she looks just uh, a lot less 
thick, I think is the way to put it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what she looks like to me. And then some of the things she said, so she lost 14 pounds and 18 inches all around in her first month, fully online, by deciding it was time to make herself a priority. And what she had to say about the experience is that she, my name is Kelly. I'm 48 years old. I'm the mother of two boys. Throughout my life, I have been up and down with my weight, trying every diet on the go with some great short-term successes, but it would only be a matter of time before I put the weight back on and more. I checked out Greg on Facebook and saw a number of women's success stories with it. So I thought, well, I may as well give it a go. And uh, I'm sure it'll be the same as all the rest of the times groups I've tried, but I couldn't have been more wrong. I had an instant connection with Greg. He's very genuine and compassionate, and it resonates in the work he does. I felt a trust and an understanding with him that I could share my story, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and there was no judgment. And I think that's so important to to have a safe place where you can just have no judgment. So I love true. the 28-day challenge because of its support and accountability in a group of women going through the same struggles as myself. I would say to anyone who's thinking about it, join it, do it. You will not regret it. Greg will help you every step of the way. It'll be one of the best things you ever do for yourself and their family. So we have another picture here, and that is of her before and after. And she worked with you for another 12 weeks afterwards, right? Yes. So after the 28 days, she decided she wanted to go and continue on and keep pushing even further. And so some people are able to go through the 20th day and practice what they learn. And they're happy to learn that and keep practicing that and that works for them. But for some people, they want to take things to the next level and kind of go a little further. So she worked with me for another 12 weeks after our 28 day. Amazing lady. Uh, she did so amazing. And the change not only in her appearance and her body, but in her mindset, I want to make a note of because there was a lot of self-doubt and self-criticism at the start that was really kind of holding her back. And the transformation she made near the end was not only physical, but a, a mental one as well. So if you're watching, amazing work, Kelly, or listening. Um, and so she lost a total of 32 pounds at this point and 47 inches all around in a total of 16 weeks. So the 28th so day and then in 12 weeks. 32 after. pounds in 16 weeks. That's two pounds a week. And that's pretty rapid weight loss. You know, as a doctor, I'm saying this, you know, it's, that's pretty rapid weight loss. But she did it in a way that made the behavior change feel completely uh, effortless. And, and I'm sure there were struggles she had because, you know, we all have struggles. We, we struggle up and down and, and whatnot. But, but I'm telling you, when I look at her before picture where she's kind of thick and she looks sad, you know, she, she just looks really sad and unsure of herself. And in the after picture, she's not only smaller, but she's more toned and she's actually smiling and she looks so much more confident. And, yes. and I'm not saying that, you know, if, if you're happy with your body and you're confident, I mean, you don't have to lose weight. Nobody says that, you know, anybody has to lose weight, but I just know that, that in menopause, women want to lose weight and, you know, here, here we have an opportunity to actually make that happen with, with some, you know, of course you got to do the work because yes. if you don't follow through and, and, you know, Kelly's results, results may not be typical of all the people that work with Greg, but she, she's what's possible. So yeah, really good example of what's possible when you put your mind to it. And so she made a decision that she wasn't going to stay where she was anymore. And she decided that she is going to make this a priority and make herself a priority. And like you said, there's always little bumps along the way, but it's that resilience and learning that you have what it takes to overcome those obstacles instead of just trying to never have anything go wrong that will help you get that mindset to help you keep going. And she enjoyed ice cream every Saturday. She <laughs> didn't complete, she didn't restrict herself. And that is a huge part of it. There's a balance because if you restrict yourself too hard and say that I can never have any of the things I love ever again, it, the inner child makes you want to say, gimme, gimme, gimme. And it makes you want it even more than yeah. before. So it, it's finding that balance to know that you don't have to cut out everything 100% of the time and you can still enjoy it, but learning to get a better relationship with food so that you can enjoy those things and keep moving forward. Yeah, food isn't the enemy. And and so that's, I think that's one thing that we can we can talk about, you know, as we as we move forward with the challenge and food is fuel and we have to like make friends with it. So yes. we've got Leanne here. So Leanne is the next uh, example. And in her before picture, and she's it looks like she's wearing the same clothes in the before and after. Yes. And 
what I noticed first is she's got a lot of rolls. Leanne, mm -hmm. Leanne's, uh, her belly is bigger than her breasts. And she's got, you know, you can see the rolls from her bra and her underwear and, and her, her arms are kind of big. And so she, she put on a lot of weight around her belly. Her after picture, and this is after 28 days, you can see that everything is smaller. The rolls are smaller. Her belly is still, I mean, she still has a belly. I won't, I won't say she doesn't. Uh, her belly is still a little bit bigger than her breasts, but not nearly as much. Mm -hmm. So what, what Leanne uh, did, she lost 12 pounds and 15 inches in 28 days without going to a gym, cutting out all her favorite foods or entire food groups. So maybe <sighs> carbs are not the enemy after all. Right. <laughs> And what she said about her experience is, I can't say enough about how my, how great my experience was during the 28-day challenge. Greg was just so great, and everyone was so positive and helpful. I like that the workouts and nutrition tips were easy to follow, making my goals attainable. For me, the accountability part and check-ins were huge, too. And seeing results so quickly just made me want to do it more. Everything I learned over the last 28 days will stay with me, whether it's incorporating exercise into my day or making healthier choices. And I want to mention here that seeing results so quickly is so, so key because motivation, motivation is not, you know, this nefarious thing that we have to go out and find. Motivation comes from taking action and seeing results. And when you yeah. see results, you see, you start taking more action. Yes. Yeah. And there's just kind yeah. of a catch 22 with it sometimes where you want to wait until you're motivated to take action but taking action and seeing those results is what motivates you. So it's like, don't wait until you're motivated to start, start, and it will motivate you. Yeah, that's great. And I think the accountability piece is so huge here because when you have other people to talk to who are going through the same thing as yourself, I mean, I know that that's been huge for me in my life. When I was finally able to lose the weight, I, I did go through a challenge and being the competitive person that I am, you know, it was really great for me to kind of follow through and post my stuff and all that. Yes. And so we have Shirley here and Shirley is actually wearing a bikini in both pictures and yes. it's the same bikini. And in 28 days, she, she wasn't fat. I, I, you know, I wouldn't say she just had kind of a pot belly in the before picture. She lost nine pounds and 11 inches in 28 days. And what, what you can see in the before is, you know, she's got this pot belly, her belly's out toward her, you know, her belly's bigger than her breasts. And she doesn't have a huge curvature to her spine. I'm looking at the before and after the curvature's about the same. So sometimes, you know, in those before pictures, they'll change the lighting or they'll change the shape of their body to make it look like they're fatter than they really are. And in this one, I don't, it looks pretty much the same. And in her after picture, she's lost a good amount of that pot belly. And you can see a lot more definition in her arms. You can see her deltoids. And she's actually, in the first picture, her face looks kind of pissed off. And in the second <sighs> yeah. picture, she actually looks a little bit happier. And so that's kind of neat. So anything you want to say about Shirley? She did an amazing job on that. And she did uh, great. And she is one of the ladies that like to lift weights. So... Mm -hmm like you can see the difference of the tone in the before and after and that tone lean look kind of comes from a combination of like lowered body fat and muscle development. And yeah. um, I think that that was something that was really key for her there and, and something that's key for a lot of women too. When women hear weights naturally, I think the thought that comes into their mind is that's big and heavy and scary, or I'm going to get bulky if I lift weights. And it's funny because the opposite is actually true. And where most people, like at the end of the day, anything is better than nothing. The key is to kind of get started. But with weights, if I had to pick one thing, I would say that would be it because it helps you build muscle. So when you have more muscle, you, your metabolism moves faster and you can eat more food and still lose weight. So we want to make sure that we held on to that. So yeah, uh, great work, Shirley, if you're listening. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's really great. I want to make sure that though we talk about in, in this challenge that, that we have, the, the menopause mm -hmm. movement 28 day challenge, do people have to exercise? I mean, is that required? No, right? What? No. And that, that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Exercise is optional. I've had wow. a lot of clients come to me that said, I'm working out six days a week. I'm going to the gym. I'm not losing weight. What's going on? And 80% of weight loss is actually in the diet. You can't out-train a bad diet. And so exercise is optional. There's going to be some options there and it can help if you want to do it, but you do not have to exercise to see results in this challenge. I love that. So just, uh, you know, for those of you who are exercise phobes, 
you can actually get results without doing any exercise. But yes. you know, what happens is you start to feel better. You know, you start to move your body more no matter what. And when you start to move your body more, you know, you, it becomes like this unconscious thing. And it's like, oh, you know, I didn't even notice that I was feeling better. And it, it really is kind of a spiral. And so our last yes. example here is Jane. Now, when I look at Jane before, Jane looks pretty hefty. We don't have a side view. We only have a front view of her. She's wearing a red tank top in the before picture. She's wearing a blue tank top in the after picture. In 28 days, she lost 11 pounds and 25 inches all around. And what I notice in the after picture, she's got her arms up like Rosie the Riveter. And she's got like, you can see her biceps. You can see her deltoid. You know, she's got really nice muscle tone and she's not nearly as thick. Right. So yeah. what do you want to say about Jane? Yeah. She looks happier. Yeah. I mean, she looked she happy did. in the beginning, but she looks so much happier in the in the after picture. Right. Yeah. And I just want to say, so here, like she's actually, I think, 39 now. Yeah. So Jane, you can really see the difference in the definition here. And when she first came, she was a little hesitant about joining, actually. She wasn't sure if she was going to. I had a conversation with her and just talked about what it was going to be like and kind of just walked her through that a little bit. And she decided to go for it. And in the first 28 days, she lost 11 pounds and 25 inches all around. And you can see the difference of the confidence even here when she's flexing yeah. in her after pictures. And uh, actually, I was talking to her earlier today. And now since this, this was a, a while ago, she's gone on and she's actually down a total of like 43 or 53 pounds now, I think, altogether. Wow. And did so she work with you after the challenge? So, no, she didn't work with me directly one on one, but she kept in touch and kept going with what she learned in the 28 day. And I, she did actually go through the 28 day again after that. Wow. So uh, she's been through the 28 day challenge more than one time just for the accountability and the support because yeah. that's such a big piece. So even though it's like, okay, I know the information, if information was only the problem, you could just Google something and you would have everything you need, right? Oh, isn't that <laughs> true? Yeah, that's such a big, big piece is that, you know, we have to make these changes and without support, it's really hard. Yes. So that was really great. I mean, you know, you've had some pretty amazing successes. And I am I think that's really cool. So with that, so, you know, we've got all these successes. So what if somebody's saying, yeah, that's great. It works for them. It's not, never going to freaking work for me. I've tried everything. <laughs> how, how do you answer that? Right. Yeah. And a lot of people felt like that before we started working. They said, like, you know what? I tried everything. I did this. I did this. And it's almost like you tried to do everything at once. And that was the problem for a lot of people. They tried to change too much all at once. So, and it's not about pills and powders and potions. It's uh, it's not always sexy. Sometimes it's the unsexy, simple things, but the key is the behavior change and the mindset. And that's what most programs are missing. They're like, here's what to eat. Here's some exercises, good luck. But the mindset and the behavior change and understanding it and trusting the process is what makes it a little bit different because we're giving you things that are sustainable. This isn't a fad diet that you're going to cut out all your favorite foods, lose it, and then gain everything back when you're done. These are things that you can incorporate into your life and make it a lifestyle and use what you learn in these 28 days for the rest of your life moving forward. And I think that's kind of what makes the difference. When, when you do things that aren't sustainable, you can't stick with it. And too many people just want that I want it all right now. Like you talked about, it's like the weight didn't come yeah. on in 30 days. It's not all going to come off, but you can give yourself an amazing kickstart in that time and, and learn habits and mindsets that can carry, that you can carry with you moving forward. And the key is that we almost make it more simple. You might feel like, oh, this is all I have to do. It's like, what about this and this, this? And we kind of tell you like, no, 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 don't focus on all that. That's too much at once. Focus on this this week, get it down. Because if you take on too much and don't give yourself time to master something or to really understand it and make it a part of your life, when you add something else, you're going to have to drop something. With the way that we do it here, that what makes it different is that what we're giving you is small, sustainable, but powerful changes that whenever we're ready to give you the next task, you're ready to take it on and so that you can keep going. And that's the power of behavior change. Yeah, I love that. And so what's really important is that when you join this challenge, the menopause movement weight loss challenge, what's going to happen is you're going to get actionable, easy 
to, to change behaviors that, that will, you know, what to eat. We, we show you exactly what to eat. And when you find out exactly what to eat for each meal, then, yeah, and all you have to do is execute on that. <laughs> I mean, yes. it just makes it so easy and you don't even have to worry about exercise. So I think that's really great. And, you know, what I love is that, you know, you've had so many women who have had success. Have you had any clients who didn't have success? Yeah. Like if you ask anyone if they've had a hundred percent success rate and follow through rate, like that's not realistic. That's again, kind of that all or nothing approach. But I think what makes a success rate so high for what I do is that part where it is the sustainable. It's the making it simple instead of making it complicated. I think as John Goodman that said, Online Trainer Academy that said, experts simplify, beginners complicate. So people <laughs> yeah. have people have made weight loss very complicated because it benefits them because then people feel like I need that information. And at the end of the day, what we do, why it works so well is because we really break it down and make it simple. I like that. When it comes to like having a success in this weight loss challenge, in the menopause movement weight loss challenge, what do you think is the, the number one thing that is going to help somebody who's coming into it actually find that success right and so there's there's a couple things really like that are going to help and i think some of the the top ones are the accountability the knowing that you're not just doing it on your own and if you don't do it no one sees like you're going to be posting in there we're going to be seeing if you're doing what you're doing and i don't want anyone to get scared by that because it's not like a, oh you better do it or you're going to get in trouble kind of thing it's like hey i see you do that like awesome it's it's that support and really making it so that you understand because a confused mind doesn't take action so when we make it simple and you know exactly what you need to do, and when you hear that, you're going to be like, what? That's all I have to do? Yeah, like, yeah, that's all you have to do. You might almost feel like I should be doing more, but don't. We, You mm -hmm. just got to focus on the actions because there's a method to the madness. There's a reason why we're doing what we're doing. And so I guess some of the keys to success, if you want, if you're thinking about joining this program and you want to be successful, number one trust the process don't try to look for all these other things if you believe in it and trust the process and just do what we tell you to do you will see results this will work for you and another one is like what gets measured gets managed a lot of people don't like to see their measurements they don't like to see their photos they don't like to jump on the scale but that's like someone that wants to figure out money being afraid to look at their bills it's like, yeah, you might feel bad when you look at it, but you can't start to fix that and fix that relationship with it so that it's no big deal if you don't begin to do that. And so there's a very, a very safe environment. You don't have to share all of your stuff for everyone in the group to see. But I think I've never had a client that has been upset that they've tracked and recorded their measurements and weight when they got to see it because that's what motivates you. It's like, yes, you don't have to look at it if it doesn't go bad, but you're missing the opportunity to celebrate if it goes right and to keep yourself motivated. And yeah. like we said, it's about separating the data from the drama. These are just numbers. You're more than a number on the scale, right? This is the outcome. We can't control the outcome. We can only control the actions. And if one week the outcome isn't what you're hoping for, hone in on the actions, figure out how can I do this better? So Greg, one, one question I, I think that is important to get answered is like, how do you deliver this challenge? What, what can women expect when they join this challenge in terms of how the information gets to them? Right, yeah, that's a great question. And so there'll be a private community for them. So it'll be delivered through a combination of emails regularly, as well as videos, explaining exactly what you need to do or delivering some motivation or key learnings for you. And there'll also be some workbooks that you'll be able to print off, worksheets that you'll be able to print off and complete that will help you better understand kind of where you are and what you need to do to help keep you motivated. That's great. And how much time does this take uh, on a daily basis, really? So literally, <laughs> you'll be getting roughly like one to two things each week that you have to do. And these things will not take you any longer than... 20 minutes, for example, if you were going to do exercise 20 minutes a few times a week or even 10 minutes is all you really need to do to get started. And the habits that we're going to be giving you are things that you can usually do in under 10 minutes a day. Wow. So we're talking about like little teeny tweaks that don't take a lot of time. And so, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of online courses and some of them, I just, I open them up and it's just like, ah, 
not too much information. I can't yeah. do it. And so yes. in this, in this, it sounds like there's, there's not so much busyness and, you know, so much consumption that's required. It's just a matter of taking action. Yes, exactly. It's small changes that you can take action on that don't take up your whole day. Fantastic. That's great. The, the key though, is to take those small actions because without taking actions, you just, your dream is just a wish. And so it's super yes. important that when you're, when you set a goal or when you join a challenge or any of those things that you actually follow through. Let's say that, uh, you know, we've come through the challenge, had some good results and want to continue. What, what happens after the 28 days? Right. So after the 28 days, if you're feeling like you really enjoyed the kind of mindset, the stuff, the behavior change, the habits and felt like I wanted to keep this going and you feel like you still need a little more support and want to learn more, we're actually going to be creating and running a 12 week group coaching program for you guys as well. That takes, teaches kind of the next steps, the next level up to really take things forward and keep you going in that right direction and give you even more skills and knowledge to have in your toolbox so that you can pull it out at any time and That's great. as well as keep making progress and moving towards your goals. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I, I think this is really great. And remember, if you want to join the challenge, you just have to go to menopausemovement.com forward slash challenge and uh, take a quick look. And, uh, you know, we'll see you inside the, the challenge. Greg, was there anything else you were hoping to, to share today? Just that wherever you are on your journey, if you're listening to this and you feel like it's not going to work for me or nothing has worked, everything I tried hasn't worked, there's not something wrong with you. It's just you haven't been getting the information or the pieces of the puzzle that you've needed. And so regardless of whether it's with us or on your own, don't give up, keep moving forward. You got this. And hopefully I'll see some of you inside the challenge. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement today. And, you know, for running our challenge, I'm, I'm super glad to have you as a specialist inside of our program. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Did you know that menopause is not a medical condition? Most doctors don't know this either. I like to say that menopause is the privilege of a long life. And to really take hold of our lives in menopause, we have to unlearn what society and the medical establishment has told us about menopause. This is why I've created this brand new course called Understanding Your Hormones and Managing Your Menopause. I want to show you how you can get on top of your menopause right now so that you can start to see it as the best time of your life. Now, this course is valued at $500 and is in the beta testing phase. And we're currently accepting applications for women to test it out for us at no charge in exchange for feedback and testimonials. But the best part is because you're a podcast listener, you can bypass the application process and go straight to the front of the line. To register right now, simply visit menopausemovement.com forward slash hormones and we can get started together right now. Remember, you can get started right now at no charge to you in exchange for feedback and testimonials when you go to menopausemovement.com forward slash hormones, and I'll see you inside the course. Thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement.